Hey guys, today is something a bit unusual for the channel. I've heard this urban legend that there's a piece of hardware you can get right that is the size of an old VHS tape and it will play modern games at decent frame rates and resolutions. Now, I didn't believe it at first, but apparently to one way of like getting this thing to turn up is by creating a demonic summoning. So that's what we're going to be doing. Now I've got some props here. I reckon they can help out. Voldemort, classic evil dude. Hellraiser, maybe I figured, you know, it, he's really evil in that. And it, he might know the RNG Jesus of the underworld. If anyone can help us, he's the guy. So we're going to set this up in just a second and leave it for a while, see if anything turns up. So the instruction said that you've got to build a pentagram out of candles and then whatever this thing is might just appear. So that's what we're doing right now. Okay, right, that's the star done. Now I've got to do the edge. And let me tell you, this is a surprisingly complex shape. I was not expecting it to be this difficult, but when you're summoning demons, then I suppose it's going to be quite tricky, isn't it? It's not something you do every day of the week. Right then, I'm just about finished here. So we're going to set this up. What if I actually summon a demon? All right, now the tedious task of lighting all these bloody candles. This is going to take me about 10 years, I reckon, but I'm dedicated to the cause, guys. We can make this happen. I'll tell you what, though, this room is going to smell absolutely amazing when I'm done with this. I'm sure we've got like summer berry, we've got vanilla, <laughs> we've got some strawberry candles. Right, it's all set up, so what I'm going to do is head to bed and we'll come down in a few hours and see if anything's happened. I, I'm doubtful at this stage, but we'll see. On this night, we pray to the God of demonic Aaron Jesus, the master race, that he bestows upon us a piece of hardware unheard of in size and performance. May your frames be high, and your temperature's low. Gabe will be with us. Right, night night. Be back in a bit. Bye. Okay, it's 3 a.m. I'm gonna head back downstairs and see if anything's happened. <gasps> oh my god, there's actually something there. Some words at the back as well. What does that say? Nook? What does that mean? What is it? Oh my god, there is actually something, <laughs> something there. What is it? The prophecy was true. PC Master Race. They were correct. <gasps> Enlightenment. What is it? I'm not sure. Gaben has bestowed his glorious will upon us this evening. Let's uh... Let's go upstairs, plug it in, and check this thing out. <gasps> I think there's something behind me. I survived. Everything's okay. I've since banished the demon back to the underworld and I'm left with this. What is it? This is a tiny gaming PC, almost supernatural in performance, you might say. See what I did there with the with the candles and the, the pentagram thing? All those props were expensive, man, but they did put me in the mood for Halloween. So then the product, Intel sent this to me as part of my sponsorship with them and it's called the Nook Hades Canyon. It's got a skull on it that lights up, you can change the colour of that too. And it measures 8.5 by 5.5 inches. It's tiny. And inside here is an i7-8809G. That's a quad-core processor with eight threads total and a 4.2 gigahertz turbo speed. Alongside that is a dedicated Radeon RX Vega M GH graphics chip. 
and the combination of these two parts gives you some very surprising performance in modern games and in this video we're going to take a look at exactly what this little baby can do. At the moment you buy the NUC as is, it comes with an external power supply and you have to install your own RAM and M2 SSD. I went with 32GB of Corsair DDR4 and an Intel 760p so I installed Windows 10 64-bit on it via USB, nice and easy and you're good to go. As for connectivity on the back and the front, there's a ton of options here and if you wanted to, you could theoretically have six 4K displays running off this. More importantly for me though, there are two mini DisplayPort outputs, meaning that I can run high frequency monitors on this, which is going to be awesome for gaming. Now what excited me the most about this product are two things. Number one, the form factor. Obviously very small and portable, light and something like this would really excel as a living room gaming device whether that's for VR or just gaming and if you wanted to take it to a LAN event, whack it in your bag, it's easy. I'm sure that you could fit it into a deep coat pocket for example. Or say you go away to work or on holiday and fancy a gaming fix, well Pop this out in your hotel room, plug it into the TV there and boom, you've got a desktop gaming PC in your hotel room. Just gotta hope though that the Wi-Fi is decent. And the second thing, number two, obviously it's tiny, but it's actually got good performance, surprisingly good in fact. So let's take a look then, the proof is in the pudding. How about the BF5 open beta? Surely not. Well, you're gonna be surprised. So here I've tinkered around a bit with the settings and I've got a nice mix of medium and high. 1080p resolution, let's take a look. We're averaging around 70 frames per second from that thing in BF5. The game isn't even properly optimized yet. And that is some serious performance considering the size of it. And you know what, you could be competitive on PC with that kind of frame rate. It's absolutely mind boggling to me. So for a laugh, I thought, well, ultra settings, go on then. Okay, then let's take a look. So 1080p again, all ultra. And I'm using a capture card here in and out to get an accurate frame rate. There's no cloning. This is the real frame rate. And on ultra settings, 50 to 60 FPS, and it looks that good. Are you having a laugh? I didn't believe these numbers at first, but they are real. I've got fraps in the top left. You can see it up there. Now, of course, if you want to go super duper competitive, whack all the settings on low. What's that going to get you? 75 to 85 FPS average. It's beautiful. It's playable. You can stick it on a high frequency monitor. What about something like Fortnite then? Still the most popular game in the world. 1080p high preset and we're averaging around 60 to 70 frames per second. It's just madness. So how about we want more FPS? Maybe you're using a high frequency monitor like I just mentioned and you want to see more of those hertz on the screen. Well, drop all the settings to low, still at 1080p and take a look, 160 to 190 FPS. Those are some very impressive numbers. What about PUBG? All on very low to begin with. 90 to 100 FPS on the new map. Want it to look nicer? Well, whack it on the ultra preset and you're gonna get 50 to 60 average. It's very quiet too. They've got a proper T-shaped vapor cooler in there keeping everything nice and chilly. There's barely any fan noise at all with the default clock speeds because what's mad is that if you want to, you can overclock this to get more performance. I haven't done that. It might be something that I play with in the future. But of course, with this being so small, the appeal of it as a living room or a traveling hotel PC is massive. It fits nicely into your living room, connect it to a big display. I think this is the kind of area where the Nook really comes into its own, in your lounge with a controller, playing PC games, racing games, single player games, chilled out games. It just makes sense in an environment like that. Or what about using this as a streaming or recording PC hooked up to an external capture card? I'd say it's possible that program processor in there is doing some serious work and you could even mount it to the back of the monitor if you wanted to. Wrapping things up, let's talk about price. In the UK, this particular nook will cost you around £848.99, including VAC. And then don't forget, you will need to add memory and an M2 SSD. And by that point, you'll more than likely be creeping up to around £1,000 spent. So obviously, if you wanted to, you could build a better performing micro ATX system for the same price. So what you're paying for here with the NUC is that 
level of PC performance that we've just demonstrated in such a small package. It's the portability and potential usage scenarios that come with that. And I think that's what makes this product so appealing to me and others out there. I was just so surprised by this though. I was expecting the usual from something of this small form factor, but it looks like the engineers are really starting to lock it down now. So great job. And a big thanks to Intel for sending over the Nook to me and letting me check it out. If you want to learn more about it, there's a link down in the description below. And also we're doing another giveaway for an i7-8700K processor. There'll be a link in the description below to a Gleam giveaway where you've got all different ways to enter. So good luck with that guys, we'll be running that for around four weeks. Let me know your thoughts on the Nook down in the comments below. If you liked the video, give it a like. If you didn't, a dislike. Subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, I've actually got to tidy this up now and blow them out. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to this. Come on, we can do it, Jack. You can, you can do it, man. God, this is hard. I haven't done this much exercise in years. Why won't you die? <laughs>